G'day Fools, I'm Scott Phillips, The Motley Fools Chief Investment Officer here in Australia. And I'm back with one of our favorite, well, they're all our favorite video series, let's be honest. This one is particularly a favorite of the investing team here at The Motley Fool, because here's a little secret, we're investing nerds at heart. And so when we get to bring you some, a little bit of investing nerdery, when it comes to books about business and investing, well, we're in our element. And uh, well, I was gonna say there were none nerdier, but that would be unfair. There are none better than Ed Vesely. How are you, buddy? I'm not too bad. Thank you, Scott. Nerdy. Excellent. Come on. Oh, I, In a good way. I, said, I said none better. I said none better. Well, that's right, mate. Nerd, nerd is a compliment around here. Yeah. Uh, we spend our lives trying to become investors, really nerding out on the stuff that we think matters. And a part of that, mate, if I find nice, nice seg here from one to the other, uh, part of that is, of course, learning more about the art of investing, the art of business, and in this case, the art of business wars. Now, this is a book by David Brown. I've got to say, mate, I don't think I've heard about this one, or if I have, I'll remember halfway through. I haven't done the research. I've left it all to you. I get to ask the questions. You make me sound smart. So let's go with what is The Art of Business Wars about? Okay, sure. Well, it's it's a book that's really a collection of stories. Now, I know we shouldn't be talking about stocks as stories, but it's a really good uh, thing to actually just go beyond the numbers, the financial statements, and just understand how companies have started, how they compete, what causes them to fail, what causes them to succeed, what David Brown does in this book. And it is, um, I think it's just a fantastic read. It's a 2021 publication as well, so it's up oh, to date. Right. Okay. But I think it's all, it all starts with the first three words in, in, in the introduction to the book. And it says, business is battle. And it just <laughs> takes me back very quickly, back in the days when we had news, as in physical newspapers. So there was a colleague of mine I remember that. Uh, at work and we'd always fight over the newspapers, but he would always want the sports section <laughs> of, of the right. um, of the newspaper. I say, right. well, that's okay. You have the sport, but I'll have the blood sport. So I'd, I'd go to the <laughs> nice. Australian Financial Review. Anyway, nice, so that nice. was my little, my little story. But look, uh, as I say, it's got a number of stories. It's one business against another. So wherever profits are made, Scott, there's always going to be someone else sort of looking over that company's shoulder. That's capitalism, uh, isn't metaphorically it? speaking, of course. Yep. Yeah, and there's always going to be someone out there trying to find a, uh, a better product, uh, maybe deliver it at lower cost, maybe deliver it more quickly, um, perhaps try to get to a better overall competitive position. And even sometimes there, there are some dirty tricks that uh, can occur as well. So Dave Brown sure. covers all of that. Um, so anyway, look, it's really important because uh, at the end of the day, you've got lives and capital, people's life savings on the line, especially in the early days. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Look, I think the interesting thing with this book, Scott, is it's uh, it's divided into chapters, but each chapter follows a theme. So, for example, if we start with um, entering the battlefield, it's a metaphor. Uh, a lot of companies are entering a battlefield, but it's interesting to see that when we're talking about entering a battlefield, in fact, all of the themes in the book, they're all based on uh, the the chapters sourced from The Art of War by Sun Tzu. He was um, oh, right. a Chinese author, so he, he lived well. He lived a long time ago, but the book was written sometime between 475 and 221 BC. So it goes quite a long way back. And I think that's where David Brown's inspiration comes from. So he's actually got, for example, entering the battlefield. And uh, he talks about, there's a number of stories in each uh, section or theme, but he talks about the uh, the fight between Blockbuster and Netflix. Right. Uh, that was back uh, around 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, there was a, Look, there's a whole heap of stories. I think everyone should just get the book and just have a read of it. But um, the, the, it was very interesting to read all about the positioning of, say, the iPhone versus the BlackBerry. And we know what happened in, his, in, in hindsight. Yeah. And, and also just with brands, a lot, of, a lot of these brands are in Australia. So even though it's an American focused book, we can still read uh, the story and the battle with um, between H&M, for example, and Zara. So I thought each, each of these case studies are very interesting reads. And um, perhaps yeah. one of the most important uh, ones was, um, or at least to me, was uh, the fights between Adidas and Puma. And that's because uh, Adidas was originally founded by two brothers who eventually split. They had an argument. And so um, the other brother goes off and uh, starts Puma and starts competing with Adidas. So oh, right. I didn't know the book that. Goes yeah. yeah. So there you go. So it's just, I, I think it's just a book where, <laughs> yeah, you do. You get a lot of insights. You get a lot of, as I say, stories. You go beyond the financial statements and you just learn about the human part of this, uh, about, uh, part of these stories and what, why businesses are created. So. I would love to see an Australian version of the book. I mean, we can go through and look at the examples in Australia. We, just just to name a few, I was actually there at FAI when it went down. 
Long story right. short, but FAI and HIH was uh, one great example of a business that yeah. just couldn't be saved. In fact, Allianz Australia came in to buy FAI when it did. And um, if you have a close look, you'll see the 131000 phone number to contact Allianz used to be FAI's <laughs> uh, phone number. So, that, so that's still there. Uh, ABC Learning Centres, we've got Bond Corporation, we've got OneTel, and I think you used to be a member of OneTel. Sim- Sim- Corp- and and even a customer, correct? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Some of these go back quite a long way. And in fact, there was even uh, Australia's third biggest gold producer at the time, Sons of Gualia. It went down in 2004 mm. and it collapsed under a huge amount of debt, as well as some very complicated hedging strategies. So there's all sorts of Australian examples, which the book obviously doesn't mm. talk about, but you could actually think about these stories and think about, well, what is happening in Australia? And certainly what is uh, the situation mm. now between, say, Qantas and Virgin or, or any of the other Coles and Woolies, for example, but there's a lot of there's a whole multitude of examples that we could look at in Australia. So, look, bottom line is I, I got a lot out of the book. I love reading. I think everybody should read and, and learn as much as they can. We all have formal study, of course, but uh, I think if you can just obtain that inspiration, just keep learning because the world is never changing. And uh, I think this is a, a fantastic book, 2021 publication, as I think I said, and uh, it's pretty up to date as well. So it's a it's a good read. I like that, mate. It's really, you know, you mentioned the top, you know, stocks aren't all about stories and mm. we probably shouldn't buy the story and therefore company shares. But that being said, I think there's a really important lesson there that you kind of mentioned already, which is if you can kind of, you know, investing well is about pattern recognition. It's not just about the numbers. If it was all about the numbers, then computers could do it and you and I wouldn't be here, mate, because it was simply a matter of figuring a balance sheet or a profit loss statement into a computer yep. and then spitting out a price and, and, you know, winners and losers. That'd be super easy. Our job is to take that information, that raw material, which is really valuable, but overlay the circumstances that the, the business is in, whether that's the competitive market, the, the you know the consumers, the, the competition, uh, the technology, the, the, the things that go into making a success or a failure in, in your parlance from, from the book, the winners and the losers, it, you know, there, there is mm. something of that, right? If you, if you know the blockbuster Netflix story, then you can think about old and new technologies colliding and wonder how that might play out. It doesn't always necessarily predictive because there are always different circumstances and things go different ways and there's always a heap of luck and coincidence involved. But mm. it's also really useful, right? Because if you start to learn some of those lessons, you can go back and say, ah, airlines are a great example, right? You think about the, the 50 year history of the airline industry and think, right, if I have a high, you know, high capital intensity, or super hyper competitive, government backed, big competition, you know what, the consumers probably win, the, the shells probably don't. On the other hand, as you say, some of those examples you've given about why companies won, why they lost, what they did differently, better. You can't always, as I said, extrapolate, but you can use that to kind of mm. help that pattern recognition that as investors we we for quite a lot of our time, right? Yeah, absolutely. And look, we're not reviewing textbooks as such, but I was thinking too, this would be a really good uh, addendum to say some textbooks at a business school, for example, or, or, or yeah, a business yeah, right. faculty at a university. And I just think there's some really good stuff here. And I think there'd be a real market for, uh, look, I'm sure there's been plenty of books already written about the Australian situation, but there'd be a really good market, I think, for, for Australians to read up on something similar. Maybe I should write that myself. I don't know. Um, Are you sure, mate? Are, are that just... the uni course? You can, you can deliver the uni <laughs> course. So, uh, Econ 101, The Art of Business Wars. I reckon you could absolutely make yeah. one, one week each, each story. Um, it'd be a great tube conversation, that's for sure. Well, we have plenty of we come across companies every day and we can see the battles we can see the uh the competitive uh, that's right. fights that are going on in industries so uh it's something that will never change scott it's going to be with us for as long as we're investing and it's worth learning the lessons ed thank you so much for bringing us the art of business wars this is another book i'm i must have been ashamed to say the number of books i've re- we've reviewed so far that i haven't read i'm i'm obviously behind in my reading this one sounds fascinating mate i'm looking forward to checking it out when i get the opportunity so you, mate, thanks for bringing us the it. art of business wars by david brown i will I will. Thank you for your time, mate. Thank you, DVR, for watching us, watching Ed and I. And I hope you've got a nice little idea of a new book, maybe at a summer reading. Coming up to holiday season, grab a copy of The Art of Business Wars, yep. sit under the proverbial umbrella with a proverbial or real pina colada. And uh, I'm not really a pina colada kind of guy, but you know, if you are, do that. Um, and read The Art of Business Wars. I reckon you might get something out of it. All right, from Ed, from myself, and from the whole Motley team, until next time, full on. <laughs>